Fleet Group. Today I'm here to talk to you about air tank identification. It's brought to you by Fleet Group Incorporated, part of our workable fleet management solutions professional network series. I'd like to use this drawing of an air system to help identify which tanks feed which brakes. Now you ask, why? Why do I need to know this? Well, when you're doing a preventative maintenance, one of the checks of your air brake system should be to test one-way check valves. That's these valves right here. Now, in order to properly check them, I need to know which tank to drain in order to test them. If I don't, I'll be doing in improper inspection and I may not get the results I want. So, we're going to go on and at this point, we're going to identify some of the main components of the system. And the air compressor is the first thing. That's where the air is compressed and it passes through the system, but it starts here. From there, the next step would be the air dryer. The air dryer is, does what the name implies. It dries the air. It tries to take some of the moisture and contaminant out of the air system before it gets to the supply tanks. The next thing is the first tank is a supply tank. It's also called a wet tank because that should be the only tank that gets water in it because the compressor makes water and contaminants. So you don't want that contaminant to get into the rest of the system. Next we have are the primary and secondary tanks. This is part of a dual service system which means that one is separate from the other so that if one were to fail you would have braking through the other one. Now one is called the primary because it does the primary braking that means it feeds most of the brakes or does the best braking of the system. The other one is called secondary. Before we go any farther, let's talk about the supply wet tank system. This is it right here. It's the compressor, the dryer, and the wet tank. Now, the wet tank should always be the first air tank past the dryer. Now, if you don't have a dryer, it will be the first one after the compressor. Another thing about it is if there is a size difference between the tanks, it normally is the smallest tank. And the third thing is it should be the only tank with a pressure relief valve on it. Uh, these pressure relief valves sometimes are in the dryers, but if you don't have a dryer, it definitely will be in the wet tank and it is there in case the compressor keeps on running and doesn't shut off then the air pressure will not build higher than the pressure relief valve pop off so that the rest of the system doesn't get exposed to excessive high air pressures. Let's now discuss the other two tanks in this system. They, they are one is the primary and one will be the secondary. Um, there really is no position that identifies which one's primary, which one's secondary. One could be closer to the wet tank than the other, uh, and it doesn't really identify which one it is. The best way to do it, and we'll follow on this schematic, is the airlines. In the schematic, we'll follow the lower tank, and as you can see, the, the airlines go back to the rear brakes. Now, the rear brakes, because there's four brake chambers, four drums, eight tires on the ground, that's our primary brakes. So that will be my primary tank. All right, now let's go back to the tanks again and we'll follow the upper tank. The upper tank, if you follow the lines, they go to the front brakes. Now the front brakes, there's only two wheels on the ground, two drums. That would be my secondary system. So we've identified these two tanks. One's the primary, one's the secondary. And right here, this is a colored schematic. Now showing you the wet with air in it, the primary with air in it, and the secondary with air in it. Now that you're able to identify the wet, primary, and secondary tanks on a schematic, let's go through the steps we would take to do this on a real vehicle. First you need to do is start up the engine and run the engine until you get maximum air pressure. Shut off the engine. 
Next, you need to get out and chalk your wheels because you're going to get back in your cab and you're going to press the yellow button, which will release your spring brakes. Now, I do want to note that this valve right here takes air from the primary side and the secondary side to release the spring brakes. This means that no matter which air tank has air in it, the primary or the secondary, the spring brakes will be able to be released or stay released in case there was an act, something happened as you were going down the road, the spring brakes will not automatically come on, the other tank will keep them released. After you're done with that, you need to drain the wet tank. When you're all done draining the wet tank, you should look at your gauge and your both your primary and the secondary tanks should still have air in them. Let's review where we are right now. Currently the yellow button is pushed in, spring brakes are released. We drain the air out of my wet tank, so the wet tank is empty. We still have air in our primary and secondary tanks. If I were to now depress my foot brake, I should see that I will have brakes, normal brake operation on all of my wheels. Let's continue in the process to determine which air tank is which. Again, our wet tank is empty. Our primary and secondary tank still have air in them. They're full of air. I should have make sure that my yellow button is depressed. It should still be from the last process. It should not have popped out. I'm going to now choose in this schematic, I'm going to show you the secondary tank. We'll do it with the primary tank in a little bit. I'm going to drain the secondary tank. Notice my one air pressure gauge went to zero. The other one should stay, continue to have air in it. I want you to note that because of this valve, air is still in the primary tank, so that air is keeping the spring brakes released. Now at this point, I'm going to need a helper. Someone should be up in the cab and depress my brake pedal. Once they depress my brake pedal, I should see the rear brakes working properly, no movement in the front brakes, and notice my air pressure gauge dropped a little bit because some of the air from my primary tank went to apply the brakes. Now you've seen what happens when you drain the secondary tank. Let's go through the process of seeing what happens when you drain the primary. Make sure all your petcocks are closed right now so that no air will be released. Start your engine up. Run the engine until you fill the air tanks up. Shut the engine back off. Notice my spring brakes are still released. This should be from the last time you pushed it in. They should not have popped out. Now I need to do is, because there's possibility of moisture or contamination inside the wet tank, you should always drain it first. Notice now my primary and secondary tanks are still full of air as they should be. Now I want to drain the primary tank. Notice my one gauge goes to zero, the other gauge should stay full of air. I want to also point out that this double check valve. There is still air coming from the secondary side, so the spring brakes will still be held released. Now, when if you were to depress the brake pedal, the front brake should work, the rear brake should not work, and you should have noticed your air pressure gauge drop a little. I hope this helps you to identify air tanks because it's very important that you know which tank is which when you're doing any kind of testing or troubleshooting. Please watch for our other training videos from Fleet Group.